MonsterCast is starting now. Guys, I'm going to give a quick message in Portuguese, but this live will be entirely in English. Pessoal, começando a live agora, deu atrasadinha aqui, a gente estava arrumando o link da live em português. Vai ser do mesmo jeito das outras, né, bebezinho? Vai ter um, um link uh -huh. só com uma live com a tradução em português, então vai ter um link com a live toda da live em português e esse aqui vai ser a live em inglês, tá? Se você estiver assistindo esse vídeo e ele tiver em inglês, na descrição vai ter o link para o português e vice-versa, tá? Não se preocupe com o bebezinho, o bebezinho já estava resenhando aqui com o Brandon, em inglês, entende bem. Mas é meio tímido para falar ainda, tá? Mas, mas, vamos... mas tô, tô desenrolando, né? Vamos desenrolar, vamos desenrolar. I try, I try. He's trying, he's trying his English. E ó, pessoal, vai rolar sorteio normal hoje, tá? O sorteio da Growth, da Garimpo, do Zambrota, da Personal Pharma e do Twin. Então mandem os seus superchats, mas não vamos ler os superchats, tá? O Gordex vai deixar depois aí. Não vamos ler os superchats, mas vai, vai rolar o sorteio normal hoje. Fechou? Então o Gordex vai deixar na descrição, né, Bizinho? Aí a gente vai, vai tocar a live assim. Brandon, first of all, man, thank you so much for thank you, accepting being here. It's an honor. Uh, we've, we, I was talking about about this. We talked with Dorian Yates, we talked with Dexter, but at our studio, it's the first time we have a Mr. Olympia here. Oh, wow. Yes, so, the, the uh, open. Eh? Open, yeah. Mr. Olympia, it's only the open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm right, right. Yeah, Technically. Right. Technically, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just technically, yes. Yeah. Politically yeah. correct, yes. Yeah, sir. because we had Edding Banks, that's a, a men's physique yeah. Olympia also, but mm. Mr. Olympia, we know that's only one. Flex, you Edding Banks, both Yeah, yeah Flex also, yes, yeah, the yeah. 212, but... Yeah. We know that th this is a common sense in, in, in the Olympia dictionary, you can say. Yeah, yeah it is. if you want to be, uh, you know, officially correct, uh, yeah, I guess yeah. technically. I didn't make the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to be because <laughs> otherwise the old school guys will, men's physique are not Mr. Olympians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they tend to speak up, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least uh, off a weekend. Uh, Atletas de yeah, the, uh, Weekend athletes. Yes, <laughs> weekend athletes. <laughs> the old school guys say the men's physique are not. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's hard to move on, you know, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, before you start, I have two presents for you. Oh. I have a present from uh, our sponsor. It's a, a t-shirt. It doesn't have any logo on it. The Actually, the, the, the great thing about this t-shirt is the quality. Okay. It's, it has a super high technology. It's the biggest size we have. I hope it fits you. <laughs> okay. I mean, you still have your, your gun showing off there. It's, it, it's pretty impressive, but... Uh, this is uh, Insider is, is our sponsor. And thank you, thank we you. We have also uh, a jewelry brand called Garim Garimpo Joro that we have a jewelry collab with them. Uh, this is the our golden heaviest uh, dumbbell. And then, yeah. The gangsta uh, bodybuilder oh. lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're stronger than that. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> put it on, put it on. Are you, you, you know, you, Brandon, you know, people say that you look like 50 Cent all the time, right? You heard this already, right? Uh, yeah, back in the day. Back in the day, you, look, you, you, you <laughs> used to look more. You're going to look more now. <laughs> I think you, uh, I think it fits. It can go over? Yeah, it can go over. Okay, there we go. Yeah. yeah. My head, whoa. That's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Tá tomando, tá tomando pouco, pouco. <laughs> You're not taking too much PDs, too. Because yeah, it's fitting for the head. Now. Yeah, it's not too swollen. Relax the show, pessoal, short TV. Beleza? Brandon, we always like to start our, our conversations just understanding uh, how everything started for you. But first of all, I had to thank the Arnold organization for making this happen. We're going to be there tomorrow at the, the Arnold South America. You will be also at the Arnold Talks, right? Mm -hmm. We have here uh, the Arnold official package oh. we received. Oh, yeah, yeah. See this? Yeah, I got. I you've got. got yeah. You've got yours, obviously. Yeah, it's just nice. This show to the people. Oh, this is a, are the VIP credentials, and the jacket that's insane, right? Yeah, the jacket's pretty nice. Look at this. Galera, casaco oficial aí do evento do Arnold, ó. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Look at the detail. Yeah, man. Ó esse detalhe aqui, ó. Dá para ver, Alex? O o negócio do zíper aqui é o é o é o Arnold. Dá pra ver? Será? Na live? Dá pra ver? Yeah. In the back. É essa pose aqui, o, o zíper é essa pose aqui do Arnold. Ele Nem fez essa pose quando ele ganhou aqui, não foi? You made this pose here, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've done it, yeah, yeah. A couple of times, yeah. yeah. More from the back than the front. <laughs> então, guys, we'll be, we'll be there this weekend at the Arnold Show. Hope you hope you see everybody there, right, Brennan? Yes, sir. Hope, hope you all come and... Uh, 
yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and uh, yeah. I, I like to see like what Brazil's got going on. You know, I come here like every two or three years, and uh, I know the scene is growing. So, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so I want to see how busy this is gonna be yes. here in São Paulo. Sao Paulo. So it's gonna be like yeah. extra big, right? I'm sure you're gonna be impressed because uh, I mean, your first signer was in uh, 2013. Yeah, Rio. Yeah, it's like the, the bodybuilding in Brazil has changed a lot. <sighs> You know, like 12, the last 12 years for yeah, sure. For sure. 11, 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, 10 years of your anniversary. It's changed a lot. You're going to see it. I think you're going to be impressed. Yeah, I'm sure. Really sure. So. But Brandon, let's talk about you, man. How, how do you start lifting? When bodybuilding and gym in general started making part of your life? Well, uh, apparently I, I uh, cared to lift when I was probably like around five or six because I asked for weights as a birthday present. Uh, uh, so my parents... Uh, got bought me the Hulk Hogan uh, little dumbbell <laughs> workout kit, and yeah, I trained. I trained That's with good. that until, until you know, it just became ridiculously too light. And then I think by the time I turned 14, uh, they got me a little weight set I can fit in my room. Uh, and then from there, I, I got into high school and uh, started lifting in high schools. Like my favorite place to be was the high school gym. Uh, I was fortunate enough to create a culture. Uh, with our with our football team to really work hard in, in the in the in the gym and we carried that out from my I think my junior to my senior year by my senior year we were one of the better teams that had wow. been there in my four years just because of the work ethic wasn't the biggest team but we were one of the better teams and I just after after high school I just had to find a gym to train in so I worked at the YMCA a little bit just so I can have a gym membership yeah. and uh, got in college played football so like I said one of my favorite uh places to be even even the strength coach back then called me uh it wasn't arnold schwarzenegger but mm-hmm. uh if you imagine with a, a uh, different yeah with a different ending <laughs> yeah. uh he called me that because you know oh, i guess i had you know the biceps and everything i took it as a as, as as a compliment yeah but uh so yeah i was always known for being somewhat muscular oh, well, I, i i had a six-pack before i knew what a six-pack was apparently wow you know uh, it's great yeah Uh, so it was just something that I didn't necessarily plan to do, uh, but um, kind of bodybuilding kind of I kind of got led into it. Uh, I never planned to compete. Actually, the first person to actually tell me uh, I should be a bodybuilder was my now wife. Wow! Back in high school, uh, just from me flipping off of something, and she saw my shirt lift up. And then what did I tell her? I don't want to be on a stage. Uh, with a bunch of oil and a speedo, that's what I told her. <laughs> and it happened to be a year later that I had to call her and tell her I had won my first show. Wow! So yeah, I kind of got into it because after I played college football, well, I stopped playing college football because I didn't finish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but you stopped because of bodybuilding? No, I didn't stop because of bodybuilding. I stopped because I, I was uh, I was immature, didn't want to wait, uh, wanted to play right away, uh, didn't like the politics of football. Didn't mm-hmm. want to be wasting my time and caught, got caught up in other things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should have probably been patient if I wanted to wait it out, but yeah. I didn't. Mm-hmm. Just just maturity level at the time. So I got in the gym, a local gym, and uh, training. Where you grew up, from, Sorry. This was uh this was I was in college. I was in Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is about Tennessee. 40 minutes or so away from Nashville, which okay. is the capital city. But Murfreesboro, if you look at the map, is in if you po- look at the map of Tennessee and you point at the middle of the map of Tennessee, that's where Murfreesboro is. It's in wow. the dead middle. So the Middle Tennessee State University is there. And that's where I went to college. So uh, there's a, a gym in that town. It was called Southeastern at the time. And it was an old powerlifting gym. They took my they took me to Golds. Uh, and they took me to a couple more gyms and I didn't really feel it. But when I went down the steps in this powerlifting gym was like a dungeon and for some reason the energy in there really yeah. you know, got me people lifting heavy and at the time i wasn't a bodybuilder so all i cared about was being strong being fast being mm-hmm. explosive like an athlete that i was like a superhero yeah, yeah. so and, i didn't and you already were the, like the strongest guy on the football team and stuff like in, in high school yeah i was pound, I, not even i was the strongest guy period i wasn't even even though i wasn't the heaviest i was still the strongest so i was always uh into being strong, performing yeah. well. So I wasn't into bodybuilding, but the powerlifters was there, the seriousness. They had a chain gang. The powerlifters were chain with, strained with chains back yeah. there. 
uh, just something about it just captivated me. And the Gold's Gym just didn't show me any interest. So I went in there and it was chalk everywhere. It was, you know, kind of dingy. And some guy, trainer, uh, he just kept bugging me. He kept bugging me about uh, about competing. About competing. And uh, so <laughs> he, I think he asked me about five times. Wow. Robert Weems was his name. And his son actually works at my gym now. And he competes. Uh, but nice, uh, nice. he just bugged me enough to where I finally said, okay, man, what do I got to do? Uh, he said, okay, the show's on your campus. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to go anywhere. You just go to campus. I'll give you a diet. Basically just lowered all my carbs. Made me eat clean. And it was four yeah. weeks away from, out from the show. And four he said, come out. in and I'll show you how to pose every day you come in after you train. So that's what he did. Wow. And I ended up four weeks later, I won... I took home like three trophies. I took home the novice class, uh, the middle. I was only middleweight in the organization I was in. It was a natural organization. It's SNBF, Bodybuilding Federation. And then uh, I won the overall. So me being nervous about getting on stage and not knowing what to expect, worrying about being in a Speedo. As soon as I got on stage, I forgot about all that nice. and thought about what I got to do to win. Yeah. <laughs> I'm posing and everything, how I got to present myself. So I kind of got the bug after that. And looking for more success, went to their national show, lost against a guy who was more mature than me. Uh, Still natural, right? Yeah. Then I went to uh, I went on the internet trying to look for where I could compete. <laughs> uh, Muscle Mania had a big website. Yeah. So I realized I could probably beat their teen champion. So I'm like, I took some student loan money. Don't recommend that, kids. <laughs> Uh, and I booked a trip to Miami to compete. This is back before all the security. I took my whole cooler with me on the plane. <laughs> and I didn't even book a hotel because I didn't have any credit cards or anything. So luckily I had a friend there to help me book the hotel. He convinced him to let me stay. And I went in there and I, and I, and I, and I won the team uh, division. So that led to basically me impressing the organization there. They were trying to get me to sign with them. That's when Ulysses was there with him and everything. He was, he, I think, he won that show that year in the, uh, uh, I guess, the adult class or whatever it was. Yeah, senior. Yeah. So I went to New York and I went to go shoot a project because they were trying to impress me. I don't know if you know Greg Plitz. He was a famous fitness model. Uh, yeah, heard him. He, yeah, he passed crazy. away in a train stunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, he. Uh, oh, he was so a bodybuilder sad. back then. And he was trying to become a fitness model. So he was trying to get smaller to oh, become a fitness model back then. So yes. I met him doing that transition. And I met a guy who was IB pro named Omar Deckard. And I roomed with him. So he told me I didn't, for some reasons, I didn't want to join Muscle Mania. I won't discuss those reasons, but he recommended me not. And the guy who invited him, who worked on the project was Adam Silver of Silver Model Management at the time. He became my manager after this. But he, he just said, you know, you should come to the NPC. Let me look over your contract, see what they see what they're talking about. Yeah. He told me that the contract didn't have anything for me. I just had a lot of obligations, wouldn't guarantee me nothing. So he said, "Well, I work with uh, I think it was USA Muscle. They do the interviews or Repetro." Yeah. And uh, he said, I- "I'm on the tour, so you can compete at this show and see how you do, how you like it, because you qualify because you're in college." It was happened to be collegiate and masters, collegiate team, collegiate masters nationals. So I went. And that's when I won my first NPC show. And from there, uh, he took me to a show for me to qualify for the national level, which was Yanni's Northeast Tournament of Champions. It was also a natural show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got second at that show in my class by a guy who, I don't know, he was very, very well developed. But uh, it qualified me for juniors. Okay. And I went to juniors and I was like depressed, didn't have any confidence because. I was still a natural guy, and I yeah, figured yeah. this national level, everybody's going to be, you know, advanced to me. So, but, sorry to ask, but what made you stay natural at that time? You, you knew uh, what people were doing, right? Uh, yeah, but I, I had no real bodybuilding was a hobby for me. Okay. Well, you know, real intentions. Yeah, live, I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't necessarily have a goal of becoming a bodybuilder. I yeah. did it uh, at the time I was bodybuilding. I was actually doing a little fitness modeling, so okay. I would, I would, I would do some stuff in muscle and fitness. I do some shoots with them. Adam would book me on those different shoots, fitness model stuff. 
And so I was just, you know, you doing had like this. That, that men's health cover yeah, physique, right? Yeah, yeah. And I and I could and I could perform exercise as well. Mm-hmm. I could mm-hmm. I could sit in the bottom of a squat and take a picture, you know, I could do all that <laughs> kind of stuff that people didn't want to do. Yeah. So I was the guy that you look at the workouts and he, you know, uh-huh. you know, who's that guy? I don't know. I'm just looking, he's showing you how to do the exercises. I was uh-huh. I was that guy. And uh so so I had no interest uh in actually really doing bodybuilding on a serious level. Yeah. Um, uh, but that changed uh the more success I got. So at juniors, uh, I got second as a light heavyweight and I didn't even recognize the guy who beat me. Like I was being competitive on stage with everybody, but this guy, he, I don't even, I didn't recognize him. I didn't know how he beat me. And I wasn't really confident going to that show, but I did well. So what really made me serious about bodybuilding is, uh, I got invited to go to my first Olympia, uh, by my manager. He was, there was Rose to the pros, which was, uh, a competition for physiques at the expo and mm. uh, Flex Wheeler was one of the people that was running this. So everybody, my manager took some models out there to compete and I just happened to go and he was trying to get me some potential sponsors and introduce me to the scene. So I was just hanging out and uh, one of our models win, Jamie Easton at the time, and everybody that entered the competition got to go to what they call the they called it the I don't know if they call it a weeder booth, but it was a basically a VIP skybox okay. at the arena, and it's free food, free drinks, and the who's who's of the magazines were up there, all the important people. So and they're watching the Olympia from the skybox. Yeah. So we get there that night, and my manager had asked Flex to put me on the list. I don't know if Flex put me on the list or not. But it didn't really matter because we get there in a group. The lady, she looks at us and she looks at the list, and she's like, "Uh, she's about to go through names." And she's like, "Ah, oh, y'all go in. Y'all look the part." <laughs> so here we go. We go up the elevator, and I'm up there, and I'm talking to people that I only see in the magazines. I'm eating food. I'm seeing everybody. I'm like, in awe. And all of a sudden, the crowd starts going nuts. So I'm like, I got to pay attention to what's going on. The crowd just went nuts. So I go over and look, and Ronnie's coming out Wow! with the Bodybuilding Ten Commandments. This is uh, – What year What year is this? Well, this is uh, 20 uh, – oh, 06. Oh, 06. Yeah, yeah. 06 oh. Olympia. So he's coming out with the Bodybuilding Ten Commandments, right? And I'm like, oh, man, I get to see – I'm here to see Ronnie beat the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm here. I'm like, Ronnie's beating the record. So I'm watching, doing the thing. And then all of a sudden, mm. you know, they're calling the – it's the final call outs and they're going through the comparisons and I'm like, Oh, Ronnie's got this crowd's going nuts. Mm-hmm. And you know, of course the Olympia, they call, they don't call second, you know, they just basically call the winner, the winner is yeah. you know, yes. him and Ronnie were standing there mm-hmm. and they say the winner is Jay Cutler. And I know mm. the arena erupted. It went yes. crazy. Right. Yeah. But for me, it didn't go crazy. It got quiet and I got tunnel vision and I'm looking at the stage, and I'm like, and it's like I knew from that moment on. It's like God said, "You, you this is what I want you to do." I'm like, "Hmm," huh. and I knew that instant that this is what I was supposed to be. This is what I knew I was going to do. Wow! Because I was, I was looking. I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm a kid in college, going to college, pretty much because my parents want me to. Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, study exercise science. I got my degree and everything, but that's the only thing I was interested in in college. So, but at that point you were ready, like a bodybuilding fan. Like you I, used, wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I like wasn't magazines and I, I had magazines. I had a, I had a, maybe like three magazines that I picked up in my room once I started training. Okay. But not, not crazy. I wasn't a crazy bodybuilding fan. I did cut out, I cut out three guys. I cut out Sergio Olivia with the pool, pool cue. Yeah. The I cut out that in a magazine. Yeah. I cut out, uh, Lee Priest Twin Lab Dab with the with the cut off jeans and the yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah, classic. Awesome. And then I uh, was a, a, a feature of Kevin Lavrone when he was bald, and he was doing the dips, and he had with his, a tank top with a no. He was it, well, he probably had a tank top in some of the shots. Okay, but, but this this shot had him. It was it, it just see you just see his chest. You see yeah. the abs, and so I cut that one out. And those are the only three pictures I remember like being like oh. And I remember being very critical of Ronnie Coleman in those magazines. 
I don't know why, but I didn't understand bodybuilding. But I was very critical of Ronnie. I'm like, why is this guy always winning? I didn't understand <laughs> it, right? But this is before I paid any attention. Yeah, but yeah. as I got to competing, of course, I would have to pay more attention. And then the guys that were around me, they would have the NPC News magazines, and okay. they would have other magazines at the gym. So I started paying attention. But I didn't never say it never dawned on me that I was going to be a bodybuilder. I, I was just, what am I going to do? I didn't really know. I thought I was going to be a strength coach. Uh, this is what I thought I was going to do. I was going to college, going to be a strength coach, work with athletes. That's, that's what was like, my mission. You want to be like an NFL strength coach or something? Yeah, like NFL, college, whatever. whatever college level, also, yeah. You, it wouldn't matter because I, I would have to start at college. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to do that. I was going to intern, but I, I was already a personal trainer when that came around. And I was making more money as a personal trainer than – what I was going to start at strength yeah. coaching with. And I had to work these long bottom of the line hours, open the place up, gym yeah. up, close the gym. So I just didn't see myself doing that with a lot of athletes that I knew wasn't serious about the weight room. And because that used to frustrate me when I used to be in the weight room with them, I'm like, these guys don't take this serious. Yeah. So I just couldn't see myself going back in that when I was training people that wanted to make progress and I was making more money at the time. So, you know, so, when this happened to me, uh, it's like I took bodybuilding from a hobby in my mind to it became a job, the best way I knew how. Now, considering I'm naive, yeah. I don't know a lot, and I'm just, I'm just happened to be in the right place at the right time every time this comes around. But the next show I have to do is a pro qualifier. So, since I'm I'm going to do a pro qualifier, I'm expecting to be a pro. I'm like, I got to do what pros do. Yeah. So let's say junior nationals were my first, my last, you know, so-called natural, sh competing as a natural because I crossed over to compete what I thought it would have to do to be pro. Yeah, you had to, to yeah. you know, go to the next level. Right. right? So, and, and what that ended up was a big question mark because I had a guy who was very popular at the time uh, that was competing in a light heavyweight class, which I was in. Everybody's asking me, what class are you going to compete in? Every time I go to any... Uh, event, what class are you going to compete in? I'm going to Arnold Classic. What class are you going to compete in? <laughs> I didn't know because it's my first time yeah. uh, exploring. And it ended up, I ended up being a heavyweight. And uh, in 07, I entered the USA's. Nobody really knew me from that area because, you know, I was I just came out of nowhere. And I got second as a light heavyweight wow. to uh, Deshaun Grimace, who, who won the show. But he was a uh, he was also a San Francisco 49er fullback wow. at one point. Yeah, so I lost a football huge, player. Man. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, this is my life. I was, <laughs> all the thing I come to bodybuilding to lose to a, a guy to, to play football. football. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of frustrating. But yeah, yeah. Uh, after that show, uh, but it's so nice. Sorry to interrupt you, Bernard. Yeah. It's it's so nice to see that a lot of athletes, especially uh, American ones, they have such a for uh, a strong influence in, in coming from football. Yeah. Because in Brazil, I don't think you know this. If mm -hmm. anybody told you, like we don't actually we don't have football like right. American football here. Right. So it's interesting to see like you and you have like Ronnie and a lot of athletes that just come from from football influence. Football right? and wrestling. Wrestling, and yeah, I, wrestling and, I, and I did both. And, and the funny thing is, wrestling is also not a, a common thing. Like we had Flex yesterday here and was mm -hmm. talking about the WWE and WWF, and it's not popular here. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have zero influence on football and, and, and wrestling here. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see that you all guys come from like the same type of influence and and, and like a base where you all start, started. Yeah, Hulk Hogan fans and yeah, Macho Man. Man. Well, you know, <laughs> you know that's the discipline. So like that's the discipline. I think crosses over like wrestling. It's one of those. It's one of the, probably the, one of the hardest sports that I've ever done. But like we're talking about, like the the, the wrestling, like the, the Olympic Olympic tr wrestling, like Greco, or, Roman or Greco, like WWE, no, stuff. Roman Greco. Okay, so it's, it's like, different. It's, it's like different. high school level. Yeah, you know, stuff yeah. you compete in in school. So that's yeah, the entertainment we follow that. You know, like back in the eighties, I'm looking at all those guys as a kid. That's the reason why I wanted to have muscles. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. they made me want to have muscles seeing uh, Hulk Hogan and uh, Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, and, you know, this is the influence yeah, I was talking about. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that 80 influence. And then you got Arnold, of course, in the movies. You got Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Like I'm the kid that watches those movies and I was working out. I'm doing sit ups. I'm doing push ups. I'm, I'm, I'm like watching the movie, but I'm exhausting myself because 
I'm like playing the character. Yeah, sure. So that's what my I think I developed my desire to train because I just wanted muscles. Yeah, yeah. You I just, you just want to look like. Yeah, I didn't know what I want to do with it. Yeah, but football and sports became an af uh, an outlet for me to do something with training, with muscles, with performance. You know, so and that's why I wanted to study it because I just wanted to. Uh, learn how to get better at it, but yeah, it's, it's that's it's crazy. It's crazy. Sorry to interrupt you because just because it's it's always like the we see it's the same background. You know, it's it's very interesting to see it. Right. I think the eighties the eighties really had an effect yeah. on my generation. Just seeing those images. I mean, because after that they kind of made everybody the GI Joes were smaller and the toys were smaller. Yeah. But back then you pick up one of those toys and they, they look were like a massive. bodybuilder. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, subconsciously true. I'm taking these things in not even thinking about the sport yeah. at all until, you know, it's in my face. So uh, a lot of people are like, what made you want to be a bodybuilder? I'm like, man, I didn't originally. I had no no desire to be. But uh, I, I learned to respect the sport by being involved in the sport. Yeah, And it became a challenge, a new challenge for me. Uh, not just, uh, you know, more of a mental challenge as well as a physical, physical challenge. Because when it comes to the discipline of bodybuilding, you have to break your – own habits and mentalities yeah you have to you know just forego what you want to do and do what you need to do and that was uh that's just a hard part of the process but if you want to get better at this sport it's you really have to learn it yeah it's no easy way around i mean you get to some success and fool, fool around a little bit but if you're trying to reach the top there's no way you can just continue to fool around yeah. and but th this was something you had on your personality like as a football college athlete for example were you the disciplined athlete or it was something like bodybuilding brought to you. I would say, I would say, the the discipline and in 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 the ability to work hard. Okay. Like I may not have cared about nutrition. I may not have cared about, you know, actually taking care of my body. Uh, but because I probably didn't know much about it. But when it came to like giving your effort, pushing, working hard, giving it all you got, that's that that was that I was, was able you. to do that. I was able to take it to that level. So, bodybuilding was like. When when it came for me performance training, going to bodybuilding, I was always about. I had a, it took me so long to break the habit of trying to be the not trying to be the strongest guy in the gym. It took for, it. you know yeah got and, it because I'm I'm trying to bring up weaknesses. I'm trying to you know connect with the muscle. I'm trying mm -hmm. to do things right. So it took me a while to realize, okay, bodybuilding. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm not I mean, a power lifter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I for the longest I was doing well. I was a uh, very good bodybuilder, but I was sprinting. <laughs> I was running stadiums. I was doing all kind of <laughs> athletic stuff just yeah. for my conditioning. You say you were flipping also, yeah. right? You were, oh yeah, yeah. I, you, I, you were you were like a gymnastic, some like yeah. I did gymnastics when I was younger. Wow, and that's then why. I think I, I think and then I picked it back up later, a little bit later, until I was like twelve and got too big uh, <laughs> for anybody to teach me anything new. But yeah, so I came from that from that kind of background. So I was always looking yeah. for something to challenge me in physically, and bodybuilding became my new that new thing for me and that I couldn't, I mean, I was good at it, but you know, as you reach a new level and a new level as somebody that you're not good as good at, yeah, as good as, and I reached that point to where I'm like, man, I, I, I'm good at this, but man, I, I got to get so much better at this. So that's how my journey, you know, pretty okay. much started. And you had like all these people around you, like, man, you're going to be the next thing. Like were people like believing on your potential People always, you know, they, they knew me as a certain kind of guy, you know, muscles, you know, show me your abs, show me this, show me that. And then when I got in the bodybuilding scene, people were like, man, you you really have, you know, good genetics. You can do well. Uh, I Go ran into takes, it a lot, yeah. you know. So, you know, it was just weird because, you know, after that, after that, uh, my first pro qualifier, you know, the first phone call I got was from Flex Wheeler. Wow. Oh. I'm like, and he called mm. me soul brother number one. So first of all, I don't know it's Flex Wheeler. I don't know who he's talking to because my name is not soul brother number one. So I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? He said, man, this is Flex Wheeler. And that's my nickname for you, soul brother number one. I was like, oh. And the reason I said, oh, and I didn't respond because I'm thinking to myself, how in the world did he get my number? 
<laughs> you know, I'm still trying to figure out like how I yeah, got my yeah. number. I can't even get excited because I'm thinking so much. Like, I didn't know where to get my number. You know, <laughs> so I was out. Even after talking to him, he's probably like, "This kid is weird because he yeah. didn't react." Because I'm still thinking like, "You're trying to connect the dots." Yeah, right? like, how do you get my number? Like, it's like weird. Why is he calling me? Pregunta para ele quando que ele ganhou o apelido dele de prodígio. When uh, he's asking when you get you got your nickname with prodigy. Uh, prodigy. I uh, see. I. <laughs> it's weird because mm. some kind of way it popped up with BSN. Okay. And I don't, I don't quite know how it popped up with BSN. I don't, I just know it popped up when I was with BSN and they started using it and they like, just kept using it. They started calling yeah. you the prodigy. Yeah, yeah, they started, they started because after also like, okay, Flex called me and then I think MD called me. Who? MD, Muscle Development. Okay, so MD, I think the, it was, the magazine. Yeah, I yeah. think it was Steve uh, Blackman. And I was getting these calls and then Hani was at the show and he was with BSN at the time. Okay. So he he saw me and he's like, he wanted to work with me. Wow. So he kind of vouched for me to get with BSN. And it came two two ways because at the previous Arnold, I went to the BSN booth with my manager and trying to meet somebody and negotiate something. And I took a picture at the booth. And it just so happened at that at Olympia that end of that year I had signed with BSN and my first signature card was that picture I took at the booth just wow. for some random photographer there and the picture was odd because I had a hat on and I couldn't figure it out because my head was shaped funny they had photoshopped my hat off <laughs> and changed the background because I'm looking at this picture like where did this picture come from I didn't notice where the picture come from Yeah, but seeing my head being shaped funny and like <laughs> It gave it away. I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's, oh, it's so it dawned on me. So all these things came full circle. Nice. Uh, and I ended up with the company, and I ended up working with Ronnie, <laughs> which wow. was the guy that, that you saw that, that made, it started yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. That I thought I was there to see to break the record. Wow. And now I'm working with him. So my story is different from a lot of stories I heard because it's like everything is about timing. So I'm on this high horse at the beginning of my career, and everything's happening so fast. And I'm thinking everything's gonna come so easy because who's pre who's my predecessor? Phil Heath. Phil, yeah. And I'm seeing everything he's, come so easy for Phil. I'm thinking, oh, I'm next. In I'm the line. next, yeah, yeah. And me and Phil, you know, we we we, we you know, we got the same coach at the time. So I, I I seen him in the room. I'm getting ready for nationals. I seen him in the room doing his first all season with Honey. Wow. Two seventy. Stepping on my scale. Two seventy. You know, I've seen that, and I'm like, and so, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm Phil Heath told me he's the first person that told me who Jim Jim Mannion was. Wow, I didn't even. I was talking to the guy. I'm asking Phil, who's like, who's that dude? <laughs> he's like, that's Jim Mannion, man. So I, like I said, I didn't, yeah. So this is like full circle for me. It's like seeing this. So I'm thinking I'm going in this upward trajectory, and like I said, I turned pro that very next year. I didn't turn pro at nationals. Got second again at nationals that same year. Got beat by A.D. Cherry, who was a longtime veteran. and But that was the first time I, I did a prep with a coach. So that's the first time oh. I had a coach. Uh, you were prepping alone? Yeah. Or you had, like, I, some, I, some help from... I was prepping I was prepping basically my wife and me. Wow. Reading magazines. Wow. Uh, but actually, actually, in 07, I wasn't married. <laughs> so it was just... I went on stage, did everything wrong. I think you I used to even sure winning, right? I think I, my diuretic was dandelion root. <laughs> uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't use any. I didn't know what pre-contest gear was. Wow. Uh, but I still got second, and then I got Wahani. Different level, and right? man, that was the most uh, dry that I ever been. I looked like a little thunder cat. Like my head was even shaped different than I ever <laughs> seen it before. So I came and like crazy condition for that show yeah. but I still wasn't an, uh, enough for me to win because I think they you know they kind of knew that I was going to come up so that next year I went into the USA's and that's I got married and me and my wife prepped that one because Hani had fell out with BSN and I all of a sudden didn't have a coach so my year that I went pro was me and my wife alone also and uh uh Silvio Samuel helped me Aww. Uh, I mean, I remember him. Bring in uh, my last. He did, gave me my final, like my final little 
final days protocol for okay. dehydration and everything. Like the peak week. Yeah, he gave me that. So that was that, that was, was it. Yeah. Wow. O, o Silvio Samuel é brasileiro. Era brasileiro naturalizado espanhol. So he, he was a Brazilian yeah. that was. Uh, he became he good had... friends with uh, with me because he had a crush on my wife. He had problems with justice. He had what? Sorry. He had a crush on my wife. Oh really? So he, it's he, not he, a good way to meet a guy. Yeah, <laughs> but he had a crush on my wife. He didn't really know because we kept our. Uh, we didn't tell everybody we was married. Oh okay, got but it. But he was real like cool, and I go uh -huh. to Cal I live in California at the time, and. He was being cool with me, and then he found out. He was like, "Oh, shocked!" <laughs> But he, you know, he still invited me over to help me, give me some yeah, advice nice, and stuff. Nice. So it was real cool. Let it. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm feel talk. free. Uh, I, I will. Don't worry. Don't. No, worry. It, don't. Tava com fome. Tava com fome. Feel free, bro. Don't just, worry. I'll taste it. Thing. I'll taste it. I'll taste it yeah, right here. Yeah, just feel free. Do, do your a, thing. Feel free. Quite food, bro. Mm, it's good here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's a oh, tra traditional. It's a Abdullah food, bro. If y'all don't see, <laughs> <laughs> but we keep going, we keep going. But um, this made to have uh, some ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so my my journey was a little bit crazy because it went on an upward trajectory, and then my it's weird because okay, oh eight, I I turned pro. Okay, I had a I had a a year off. I had a baby in two thousand ten. Mm. Uh, well, two uh, two. So I didn't compete to actually 2010 because my wife had a baby. So I took some time off, try to get back to my bodybuilding routine. And I did my first, I did some, a lot of international travel. I got back with Hani and it just didn't work out because I was on the rise and Hani was on the rise. Yeah. And Phil was on the rise, right? Yeah. So he was doing, Hani was doing, I remember him back in the day. He, he, he started FST7 because I did some of the videos yeah. for him, promo. And then he was, he was apparently emceeing shows. And then he started training girls. And when I got with him, he wasn't doing all that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he, he you know, we kind of got a little bit, you know, communication wise, we weren't on the same page. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Flex moves to to my hometown. I was in California. Flex Lewis. Not my hometown, but he moved to where I was where I was yeah. living from college. So we moved to Murfreesboro, and uh, I was in California. So when I came back, and I was going through all this, you know, I met Neil in the gym. So Flex is in the gym, Neil's in the gym, and Flex was training with my old training partner. So it was like, it was like a big family. So yeah. when I fell out with Hani, Neil was there, and he helped me prep. Nice. For my... Uh, We had Neil here also. Yeah, Neil helped me prep for my pro debut. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, he helped me finish my prep. Can you speak closer to oh, the mic, please? But he helped me finish my prep okay, for uh, my pro the, debut. Okay, okay. Because uh, I, you know, I was kind of like, I didn't have any anybody, so I asked him. And we can, and I came in like seventh at the Tampa or something like that, so I didn't do as well as people expected me to. Yeah. But we... we, we your, was your comeback, right? Well, kind of a comeback. Yeah, it was yeah. my pro debut, so yeah. I hadn't competed. Debut with a comeback, right? Because I had a year off, yeah. and then I it was so we kept competing, and then we back then if you place top three at any show, you qualify for the Olympia. Yeah, right. So I went to to uh, Toronto, Neil, and I made third. I got third in Toronto, so that qualified me for the 2011 Mr. Olympia. And so my first Olympia, I was uh, eighth place. I was in the top 10 of my first Olympia. And I, we it's came insane. in good, good yeah, condition. Insane. Yeah, so it was it was crazy. But With Neil also? With, with Neil. Neil. I, with Neil, yeah. Nice. Yeah, me and Neil clicked really good. And we, you know, we had a good good outing. But then it was the same thing. It was like, Neil, I, I went out to visit. I went out there to uh, Tempe and I visited uh, where they were from. And I was out there for prep. Neil was building a house himself for his family and his brother-in-law, I think. They were doing all the work. So Neil needed money. So he was training a lot of people in India. So I would try to get ready for shows at some points, and he wasn't always available some, for some of the shows. So this is when George Farrell came in. Uh, I think I was in Texas. And uh, I'm sitting, I'm doing a show, and I'm watching George move and shake. And it's, George seemed to, like, talk, get, a, get away for one of his athletes to get a better look. And a call out. I don't know. I don't know what, you know, I'm just like, hold on, what happened there? So I'm like, man, George, he's really putting in some effort for the athletes. He's here. He's being supportive. He's, you know, vouching for his yeah. people. And he saw me and he said, man, you shouldn't be at this show by yourself. 
He said, you should never be at a show by yourself. He said, you know, you, uh, you know, you, you know, I, I never let you let you at a show by yourself. You, you know, I'm, I'm here, man. If you need me, just let me know. And he's talking to my wife as well. So he's like, sounded good. So we'll try it out. Cause you know, Neil was a lot, he's in India a lot. I can, can contact him as much and and that, and and this level you have to have an attention yeah a different attention exactly right? so Neil especially was, an open body building. Neil was taking care of his business what he needed to take yeah. care of so I figured okay I had to take care of what I needed to take care of so I got with George and me and George came out the gate 2013 here in Brazil yeah and we I went I, I, was I, went, there. I went my first show with George I was there. So with my first show with George, you know, so I'm like, oh man, okay, I'm back Arnold, up. Come on, I'm back up, you know, yeah, I'm back up. And yeah. then it was controversy behind that because mm. uh, my my well, he kept, became my teammate. Rest rest in peace, Cedric, Cedric McMillan. Yeah, yeah, you know, he missed the I, the I weigh in. So yeah, it, you know, that was a big controversy. Story, yeah. So it was like Cedric came in after me, but we never really competed competitively head to head. We've been to Arnold together, and that's when I first met Cedric. Was at the Arnold. And that's when I realized that people suffered from really bad nerves before going on stage. Cause Cedric was a nervous wreck. <laughs> and I just happened to be talking to him, you know, lightening the mood. But he looked uh, at me, he said, Bro, are you nervous? <laughs> I said, No. <laughs> he said, Stop lying. <laughs> I'm like, what? I said, well, No, I'm not lying. What do you mean? <laughs> he said, No. He says, I'm nervous as shit. <laughs> I'm like, You are? He's o, like, o Cedric aparentava não ter uma boa cabeça. He said Cedric didn't, like, it, it apparently, he didn't have a, such a good head. Like, a, yeah, he suffered with anxiety. Mind. He suffered yeah. with anxiety. So he had a, he had some, a lot of anxiety issues. But the funny thing about Man. it was, mm -hmm. when he stepped on stage, you couldn't tell. You couldn't tell, yeah. You could only tell backstage. Yes. So Cedric could be the guy by himself backstage. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking for him because he's in a corner by himself trying to get his stuff together before going on stage. Yeah. And it's funny because you think about his military background, you would think that he's like, oh, it's just a bodybuilding show. I'm, you know, right. I'm with guns and things and machine guns and things. Like this is just, should be just a bodybuilding show. But. Yeah, it, it was so weird because Cedric also had a big personality. He was hilarious. Yeah. He was always friendly. He was a always having guy, a good yeah. time. But he had this stage issue. <laughs> so you like, you, you, it didn't make sense to me. It was yeah. like, it didn't make sense because he's always a guy making jokes. I travel with him because we were side tech together. Me, him, Sean. Fuad, nice. Ben Pakalski, Max Charles, we the all, team, you know, yeah, yeah we all team. travel together. So, we, you know, we spent a lot of time. So I was like, man, this that was the weirdest thing to me. <laughs> But uh, so we competed in that, and with Sean too. Sean was back then, so I was I was beating those guys. But I still, when I when I did beat him in that contest, I didn't get the respect because he was like the MD, the, front runner, the yeah. MD front runner to yeah. come in to that show. But. I won it and I won my first show and I was like, okay, now it's finally looking no. up. I got this thing balanced out. This this was the turning point in your career, like this no, first Arnold. This wasn't the turning point. Really? I, it was one of the turning points. Okay, it's like it was one of the the peaks. Yeah, but after all my peaks, it seemed to be a, a immediate valley at some point because uh, at some point, I, you know, I just say, I'll just say it like this, you know, George, we wasn't gelling as far as program and everything. So I was like, man, I'm gonna try to do something on my own because people are still complaining about my condition and I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. So I'm trying to suffer. I'm trying to show people I can suffer. Yeah. I can come. But all that suffering, all that trying to put myself through the trenches, my body was not responding to that at all. All this, because people, people like, they don't think you work hard enough. They don't think you do enough. So what you're gonna do? My mentality, I'm gonna overwork. I'm gonna over diet. I'm gonna get this. That's what I needed a coach because yeah. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it there, and nobody's gonna be able to pull me back. And that made me look worse. So even though I'm pushing for condition, I'm coming up soft. I'm not coming in because I'm not full. Yeah, I'm flat and water. You know, so it just wasn't working. So I think I was placing last. I, even though I would qualify wow. for the Olympia, I would place last. Like even though I may win a show that year to qualify, I was still not really doing anything. So that's when Kuwait option came my wife asked me at some point before i went to kuwait if they asked you to go to kuwait would you go i said no because i didn't want to think about it okay 
But and what was going on in Kuwait at the time? Who, who was there? Well, you know, Dennis Wolf was there, Dennis James. Okay. You know, they were bringing it up, and that's how I kind of knew about it. Then you had all the athletes, like Victor Martinez was going out there. Ro- Roly was out there at the time. Big was there already? Big Remy? Uh, Not yeah, Remy was Remy. there. And then uh, Ashkenani was, was on that scene too. So, you know, I just I just kind of saw that going on. I'm thinking, ah, yeah, there ain't no way I'm going to end up out there. I didn't think it was gonna possible, you know. So – uh, what ended up what ended up happened was I qualified for the Olympia in 2016, and I'm I'm just going just for motivation. I know I'm not going to do well. I'm just going there to be around greatness, mm-hmm. take it all in, look at the guys, and get motivation. So I'm backstage after pre judging, and I walk up to Victor because that was the transition year for Victor. Victor had to fall off, but he came back that year. Yeah. He won, I think it was Baltimore, and he looked crazy. He looked like he was back. So I, I I went and congratulated Vic and his coach Abdullah, and, and Abdullah looked at me. He says, "Hey, you want to come to Kuwait?" Mm. I said, "He said I think I can make you top six in the world." Oh. I was like, uh, mm. "Okay." Uh, I said, uh, I'll, "I'll come into Kuwait in two weeks because I had a Kuwait Classic." And I said, I, "We can talk about it there. You know, yeah. we can talk about more there." So I was getting ready to go to Kuwait and compete. So I get to Kuwait. At some point, Abdullah picks picks me up, and he's riding around in his car, I'm riding around with him, and he starts talking about when he first met me. He starts talking about you know, you know, my physique, my shows that he liked my physique in. I'm like, how does this guy know so much about me? Like, I don't remember <laughs> meeting him before this, but he's laying it out, and then he's telling me he's laying out a strategy for the next season. Wow. What shows he wants to do. He says, if you come to Kuwait, man, I, you know, I'm helping you. Unbeknownst to me, it was, it wasn't, it was him. It wasn't not that, you know, it wasn't it was a team. Kuwait, it was it wasn't a team decision. This was an Abdullah decision. Okay, so he has me come out to Kuwait and it's like, surprise. Brandon's here. What are we going to do with him? So, you know, I show up. I'm not knowing any different. I'm thinking I'm showing them because I'm supposed to be there. So, you know, of course, I'm an athlete there. They they, they house me. They take care of this, take yeah. care of that. And I start getting on the program. So not knowing, Abdul is just like, uh, no, nah, I'm bringing him in. I want to work with this guy. I've been wanting to work with this guy since I first met him in 2010. Or he didn't ask he nobody for this. He just no, brought no, him in. Yeah, he just, that's, a, that's Abdullah. He's a, he's a go-getter <laughs> guy. He's yeah. gonna, he's, if he believes in something, he's going to do it. So, yeah, so we started prepping. I only had 11 weeks to prep. We wanted to do the Arnold. Okay. It was in 10 weeks. And that, that just being in that environment, focusing only on bodybuilding, my whole physique changed so quickly. It was, like, ridiculously fast. Like, I had I, – I did what you were doing in the offseason and, and dieting in that amount of time. And we wanted to do the Arnold, but yeah. but Batter was like, no, you, I don't think he's ready for the Arnold. So we decided we were going to do uh, New Zealand. First show, week after the Arnold. So we go in there, and we're ready. We're looking crazy. My physique has totally changed. And we're going there taking names. And Dallas just came out of that. Dallas McCarver, who okay. was a Tennessee mm-hmm. boy. Yeah. So oh, I know. nice. He, uh, yeah, it's true. He, it's Tennessee, yeah. He just came out of uh, the Arnold. He got second to Cedric, right? Yeah. So he's expecting to come in to New Zealand, because Cedric's not doing New Zealand, and win. So I'm like, if I can beat Dallas, then – it's on, you know, and I feel like I could beat him. So we went in there just to beat Dallas. And that's what I went in there, took them names, made an impression for ourselves. And I'm like, what if we would have did Arnold? That would have been crazy too. Yeah. So from that show, we went to Arnold Australia right after the week after. So it was three shows, three weeks in a row. So we're going in there to show them that it wasn't a fluke. So I went in there and that I won that show again. again. And then that's when everybody was like, okay. This guy's Brandon's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandon's back. I don't know what they're doing in Kuwait, but this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, but it was an environment I needed because maybe I, my wife says I suffer from ADD, attention deficit yeah, yeah. disorder, so I can't focus on a bunch of things at once. But if I zone in on something, I'm you got much it. better. But before you went to Kuwait, what do you think that was going on there? Like you seeing guys getting better? What you thought that like what's going on in Kuwait? What you thought it was? I didn't know. I didn't know. I had no clue. I know that people were talking about anabolic chicken. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, they must be doing something special over there. <laughs> but when I went, I mean, besides them just kind of like regimenting your schedule, pushing you hard in the gym, 
I didn't feel like I ever been exposed to anything that I hadn't been exposed to before. It's just maybe the quality was better. Was somewhat better. Yeah. Uh, access was better. It wasn't like secret and yeah. you know <laughs> hiding is like you know everything was just like oh you, you know come so on bro just going yeah. by it was just the culture Whatever, at yeah. the time so it was like uh so it was just like that, that pressure and able to focus on you know the meals were prepared and laid out and and I could get food all, anytime I access and all I had to do was focus on going to the gym getting my rest and eating all my food don't have a pandora box yeah i mean I, it's all I had to focus on yeah i didn't have to focus on I just stayed on my own schedule. I didn't focus on, uh, you know, what I had to do for my wife, my kids, and anything. I didn't juggle anything. I just mm-hmm. focused on me. And in that in that period of time, my body just responded. I'm like, man, every we were fo- we were getting excited because we were posting updates every single week, and everybody's accusing us of Photoshop and uh, Magic Mirror and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And then all of a sudden, we hit the stage and we went in, and they're like, hold on. People said that that mirror in the bathroom yeah. was special, right? Yeah, yeah. They had yes. something in the mirror. But the thing was, they say a magic mirror, and we wasn't even using that mirror. <laughs> that was Roly was using that mirror. Yeah, yeah. Right? but Roly's picture were insane. Yeah, like, you saw that, and you're like, oh we my started, god. We started using a mirror by a window. Okay, mm-hmm. and it yes. still were saying. It still were saying, yeah. So that's why, if you notice now, we don't take any pictures indoors. We take it right in direct light. You use it there, shadowing. The- ele, ele usa o espelho do, da janela e o Armadi também, o Armadi Canel. Oh, Eskenen, y'all also use this the same mirror? Yeah, he used the same mirror. But so me and Abdullah was like, nah, we can't we can't do what everybody else does. And they're still accusing us of having extra shadowing with the side yeah. light mirror. So we went out the back <laughs> where the pool is. All the lights hitting you directly. No shadowing. No shadows, nothing. Yeah, so it was like, say something now, you know? So so you think the big thing with Kuwait is the, the routine, the environment, like... I, I remember that Julio and I, you, you met Julio Balestrin that, that was with you a couple mm-hmm. of days. He said like it's similar similar with what we had here with the pandemic. Like mm-hmm. the only thing you do is you go to the gym, you train, you go home and you eat and you go to the gym and you train and you go home. That's it. Th- that's the, the like the the difference between prepping in USA and Kuwait, for example. Yeah, it, it, like of course, we have the, the access, the, the easier access mm-hmm. for good quality stuff, but nothing you cannot get in, in the US also, right? Right. I mean... Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about like it's who you know, what kind of networks you're attached yeah, yeah, to. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's it's like the same routine over and over again. And I find that if you guys that can't deal with it, it's normally like in the three week mark that they start to break. Yeah. Why do yeah. you think so? I don't. I don't know. I guess it's so different than normal life. Like I have my roommate. I have several roommates there, so I, I study my roommates. So from Regan Grimes to yeah. Akeem Williams. Yeah. Uh, I, I I run a three week mark, guys. Either either you make it, or you stay, or you or you go home. I don't know what it is. They get homesick or whatever it is. But at three week mark, I seen Akeem go through it, and then he was able to continue. And then uh, I left actually right before Regan went through it. But Regan, he, he didn't. Yeah, because it's something about up. that that uh, three week period. If you can make that past that, you're good to go. Because I guess it's just so much monotony. Yeah. And no relief. Me, I can be bored. I can, you know, I don't have to have a lot of entertainment. I'm fine. But for some guys, that mental aspect of not everybody speaking your language, yeah. you know, not being to have the conversation, not being around anybody familiar, and then having that same cycle, and you're being pushed every single day. Every single day you're being pushed. I think that gets to a guy's... Uh, after a while, they're like, "Oh, this is this is not paradise. This is a prison." <laughs> you know, you know? Yeah. But, but for some athletes, that's a paradise, right? Yes. You yeah. only have to train, sleep, and, and eat, right? right? So for me, it was it was like I said, it was for me, it was fine. Maybe because I'm the only boy in my family, I spend yeah. a lot of time by myself. And can you push the mic a little bit closer? Okay. You you don't have to be. Yeah. Maybe maybe because I'm like I was the only boy. In my so family, you're used to so like hanging by myself, you know. Yeah, alone. Yeah. So maybe that's I'm used to that kind of aspect, but uh, yeah. So some people they can feel really lonely because you know you're in a room full of people, and everybody's speaking to each other, but nobody may be speaking to you. Yeah. Because they're all speaking Arabic or whatever. <laughs> so you can you can buddy in, but you know you may not want to buddy in. So I, I'm fine in that environment. It's not it's not an issue for me. But some guys, you know, they they they're not used to that. That's such a, a dramatic culture shock that you know they don't they don't know how to really. I think it's hard, like uh, being away from your family, mm-hmm. your friends. I think people think it's like a paradise, but when you live mm-hmm. this, 
maybe you know some guys just break down and for me for me my motivation was uh, like the 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 deprivation from not being with the things I love and not being in things I joy was kind of like the driver because I'm nice. like because I'm like I'm here for a reason for a purpose yeah and the last thing I want to do is go back empty handed wasted time you know what I'm saying you were like I'm gonna make it work yeah I, I'm not I gotta doing this I gotta nothing. make this work because yeah. I gotta answer to everybody back home that's allowing me to do this. Nice. So that's the mentality I had. So yeah. I couldn't go there and, and mess around and, and not give it my my efforts. So that kind of set it up for me in that way psychologically. So that's what made it strong for me. But n not everybody had that kind of motivation, I guess. Yeah. And and what are you were doing different in Kuwait and like training wise, diet wise? Well, you know, train training wise, you know, you think you have limitations. You read literature. Uh, about you know overtraining what you don't mm. do what you don't do but okay. then you go to an environment to where somebody's like what can you do let's see what you can push let's see how much we can push you through and, and can you recover then you start to test those boundaries and those limits and you realize okay i got i got maybe got a, a bigger ceiling for a short period of time than a lot of people do mm. like so we you know certain phases we may do a ronnie style program for four to six weeks and then we'll bag it off. But a lot of guys, you know, that's a lot of volume. Yeah. A lot of weight. You don't realize until you do it, two, two, two body parts a week, you know, for that long. And you're like, man, Ronnie was a freaking animal. Most guys <laughs> would just burn out and yeah. the performance would start to drop. Well, we we pull back only because we're getting close, we're getting more better condition. We don't want to go into the show burnt out, yeah, overtrained. So, you know, we want to keep because you know, you're training a lot. A person like me, I go flat. It's hard mm -hmm. to keep blacks in it, and the more I eat, the more I have to eat, you know? So we're trying to manage that aspect. So, uh, you know, you just find out you you don't, you may not be, you know, research is on the averages. Yeah. You know? But in those research studies, they have outliers on the bottom and on the top. Okay. So I am I may be an outlier on that, on that scale from one of those ends. So that's what I had to realize. It's like, yeah, I could go by the traditional principles and the things we know and studied, but until we test it on me, we don't know if that's what we should cater to. So that's what allowed me to explore, you know, by other people kind of guiding what I do, getting the feedback and yeah. seeing how I recover, kind of pushing those limits a little bit more than I had been. And you was all training with somebody there or were you training alone? Well, me, my, me and Abdullah, mm -hmm. <laughs> Abdullah back in the day when I first started, he's trained with me. Every day. And he got the personality. We like, uh, I'm, I'm kind of chill. He's go, 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 go. So, like, you know, I'm looking up. I'm doing exercise. I'm looking up. Like, where did Abdullah go? <laughs> he done left me. He's already started another exercise on the other side <laughs> of the freaking gym. I'm like, oh, man, this guy's like, and he used to bust his balls. So I, I trained with him first, and we had other guys come in. Like, Regan came in, and sometimes I would train with Akeem. And then every once in a while, I trained with R Roly and uh, Nathan. Okay. And on a different occasion, maybe when I did some with Oscar. And then uh, – Victor, when he came in, I trained with Vic. Oh, nice. So, uh, you know, and then the, a lot of knowledge, right? A lot of experience being changed between right, you guys. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, we, we just to see Roly in the gym, Nathan in the gym, Oscar Nani in the gym, King, just to see those guys in the gym and you're training. You may not even be training with them, but you're training. Mm -hmm. and you see them pushing themselves. Yes. You're like, man, yeah. Okay. It's like big dog status. Who, who's yeah, going who's yeah, to yeah. get the work in? And, and Roly's a freaking maniac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you train, you, you train with Roly. Here's, here's, here's my experience when you train with Roly. Mm. I'm training with Roly. Okay, we're having good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh, this is great. The workout's going good. All right, we got to be done by now. Roly, what, what? You got another exercise? You gonna do two more exercises? What? You still want to train? Well, I'm done. Like it's <laughs> enough. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Like Roly's got. A, he's a workhorse, so he 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 don't know when to stop. He'll be injured, and I'm like. You hurt your hamstring? Well, then why are you doing hamstrings? You need to rest. <laughs> you know, you know, he's just it's a go. It's hard to make him stop. Right? Yeah, he's a go-go go guy. So all those different type of personalities, and Nathan was a strong, strong beast, you know. So all those guys, you can feed off of them and they push you. Because you're like, okay, this guy's giving it his all. I ain't got no excuse. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, you push harder, yeah, right? Bring out the best. And then we can sit down and eat together, joke around, and have a good time. 
but it's like that competitive atmosphere in a good way, which is hard to find. Yeah. It's linking back to the old school days in Venice Beach or something like that when all the body British used to congregate in one area. They yeah. look at each other, spend time with each other, train together. It's kind of similar to that feel. That's like the closest thing I can imagine to that feel. And, and what you saw it worked for you training wise, like Brandon, like uh, you are a high volume guy, low reps, a lot of, a lot of uh, overload waiting. What do you like to do? I'm, I'm more, of a, I'm more of a volume guy, but uh, you know, you you do you have to challenge me with the load. We can't, you know, uh, you know, I do have to progressively, and which happens naturally, you progressively get stronger. Okay. But uh, and uh, you're a very strong, like naturally strong guy, right? Uh, I've always been, yeah, pretty pretty strong, pretty strong guy. Uh, I've always cared about that. Yeah. Bodybuilding I had to transition to not caring about that so much. But then when it comes to aspect of doing that on top of the volume that you have, trying to get the progressive overload, I'm 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 all about it. Uh I work with uh I'm at uh Aunaki, uh in recent preps, not this last prep, but in recent preps. Uh and he's more of a uh, more of a logbook guy. You weren't uh, a, guy, a logbook guy. No, I wasn't a logbook guy. I'm more of an intuitive guy. Me and Abdul are more intuitive, but he's more of a log guy. Okay. And he has a good memory. So he would, I would go train with him and he would always, you know, he would, he would change the loads a lot and, and push me to go heavier. And, uh, and you know, I'm not going to bend. I'm, I'm not going to break. I'm not going to back down. We're going to push. So yeah. yeah, you get pretty, pretty stupid strong, but I find that, uh, if you don't pull back at some point of the prep, when you get close, you're going to go in with wear and tear yeah. too much wear and tear, you know, but I, I respond to that training just as well. I mean, I'm not saying, that that training was any different. It's just that I understand that sometimes when you get closer, you get drier, you get leaner, you may want to proceed with a little bit more caution. Uh, but what you did is uh, you 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 maintained the, the intensity and you only you only worked with the lower volume, or yeah. you you maintained the volume and just the intensity low inten can be, can intensity can be maintained to the degree you want it. But I think the volume has, has to back to, down yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. more. You you can't have when you get close, you can't have both. Both, okay. both. You either back the intensity down and keep the volume, or you back the volume down and keep the more intensity in there. And uh, and I and I find that having two sets to go hard on versus four or five, six sets is a lot easier uh, mentally, mentally yeah. to even push yourself even beyond. So I I like both forms. I've responded to both forms. It's just a matter of you know what I enjoy, what mentality you want to take it to. Because at the end of the day, you got to enjoy your training yes, yeah. to get the most out of it, right? Normally, how many sets do you, you go for or reps you go for? A range, like... Well, well, tip, typically... In, just understand how you like training, you know? In a modern, in a modern, in a modern, like, we would do, like, let's say a back day for, for us traditionally would have been, like, six to six to eight exercises. Okay. And traditionally, we, we, we'll crack out, like, four sets of each exercise. Now... As I, as I got more mature, we would back down the volume a little bit and we would uh, limit it to not taking anything but the last couple sets to failure. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Versus before we were taking like literally every set to failure. Now, as a young man, I could, I could, I could deal with that. But as I'm getting more mature, I think we need to be a little bit smarter yeah. and not so wear yourself down in the prep. So I've changed a little bit, and I like I like that style. I don't I like either either style, but I think it's a little bit a smarter approach. So I find that both of them work. Uh, it's just a matter of what your intent is. And, you, and the sets you don't fail, you go for like 12, well, 10? We're going we're going for I, I like personally I go for the feel. Like I want to feel this load, but I don't want to fatigue. Okay. I'm not trying to. This load is not going to fatigue me. I want to be. I want to save it for the the load. I want to save it for the real real working set, and that's that mentality when I do, uh, when I'm not counting every set. I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm using this as a way to adjust to the increased load. So this is my speed bump, so I can feel this. I move okay. it, make it sure I move it quickly. Yeah. But I'm not going to do any ground reps. You know, my ground reps are going to be for the top sets. Not for these sets, because right. so, I'm trying to concern myself to so I can have the maximal intensity towards that end. That's when I train with that type type of approach. But when I'm training by feel, I may take each set a little bit further because I know the intensity it's not, may not go up to yeah. to to as high. So I want to need that volume to count. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm trying to not rely on the volume as much, then I need those working sets that little volume I have to count. So I'm gonna take it there, rest more, making sure I can deal with this load and be able to push it there mentally, and uh, 
neurologically <laughs> without too much fatigue. So your chop sets, you have like a, a nice res, mm -hmm. not high reps, mm -hmm. and the, the best way you can do it with the well, best form possible. Put it this way. The top set could be high reps. Really? Mm -hmm. The feeder sets could actually be lower reps. Let's say because I could do like 20 and I may do eight. Or Impressive. I could do, yeah. Or I could do like you know, 15, but I may do seven, six, somewhere like that. And then, cause that low, as that load gets heavier, mm -hmm. I'm, I may take that load. My, my, my goal may be to take that load to 12 once I get to that top load. So I'm not going to use all those reps on those loads that I'm just adjusting to get to the top load. Yeah. It's not necessary. That's when fatigue is going to set in and I'm not going to be a performer as well once I get there. So I'm just trying to limit fatigue at that point. So when I do get to that load and I'm trying to work for that 12, that 15, or whatever that number is going to come out of that to failure, it may mm -hmm. be a higher rep set, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste my time or waste that energy just trying to progress to that load. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save it. So mm -hmm. I, when I have it, I'm in that mental space. I'm not overly fatigued and I'm going to push this set wherever it's going to take me, you know. And typically with a log book, when he logged it, we kind of yeah. knew where that would be, uh, you know, depending on you know, how my body's recovered to a certain degree. And the division of the training, what works for you? Like a muscle a day, like a group a day? Uh, typ typically, I've responded to a lot of everything. So if you want, if you want to separate the muscles more, then I can take, they can take more abuse. If we're grouping chest, triceps, shoulders, something together, then that's going to be a less volume per group because typically the frequency is going to be higher, a probably bit a little higher. bit higher. So it just depends on how frequently you train the muscle. If you train it more frequently, you're going to have more groups together. If you are training less frequently, then those those workouts are going to be freaking high volume, smashing, killing it. So it just depends on the style. I don't think you can have both. What do you like more doing? Like what works work better for you? Like training with more frequency, one group a day? What work better for you? Like if you had to choose one style? I can't, I, I can't do, I, I, I couldn't do high frequency for a whole prep. Okay. At some point, I would have to bag it down for recovery purposes when calories get really extremely low. And the joints need more rest and recovery at some point, especially if my loads are really, really high. Now, if I'm just doing volume training, maybe I can take that because my loads are more moderate. But if I'm pushing intensities, then I, I can only maintain that frequency for for, for four to six weeks. Yeah, got it. And then I have to take it back down. So it's not it's not all one. It's not all the other. It's like having a tool in the toolbox and being able to pull it out when you need it. Or, you know, yeah. based on how your body's responding. And that's what I've learned just from how coaches dealt with me. And I'm like, and I'm and communication with your coaches is key. Because if you're not sleeping, if your appetite is crap, then odds are, you, you may be doing a little bit yeah. too more than you can handle. So you need to bag off a little bit until you make that adjustment again. So it's all, it's all about recovery at the end of the day. And if I can't recovery cover enough to where I'm performing at a high level, then uh, I'm, 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 I'm spinning my wheels or I'm going to hit a patch to where I'm not going to be able to train the way I want to for a week and regress instead of progress. And uh, I want to ask you also, uh, Julio was here and he said that one thing he noticed about in Kuwait is the preference for using more machines. Mm -hmm. Do you, you saw this also? Like, oh, or, man. Or, or I, just because it has so many options? I, uh, you know, I used to be a freeway guy, yeah. tried and true. And then I went to Oxygen Gym and I, and I realized all this free weight, you know, it's just not, it's not all free weights, you know. We like to use free weights. We like yeah. to use dumbbells. I don't like to use dumbbells from time to time. I don't care about dumbbells because I hate getting them off the rack, <laughs> taking them to the bench. Set. I mean, I, I mean, it's too much work just to lift that load. Yeah. I don't yes. like dumbbells, but I will do them mm. when they made me do them because there's certain aspects of stability, stability that you yeah. need to develop yeah. to, for to maintain yourself from injury prevention. So that stability factor comes in for that re that reason, but it's not for building muscle because we know the more stable we are the more you can activate the muscle you're trying to work. Yeah. So machines, where you can do them, all get out. I wouldn't totally abandon free weights because, like I say, just for the motor unit parts, let's say if you're having aches and pains in your shoulders and stuff, probably the stability factor that you haven't been using is, is coming into play. So you need them in there sometime. But like I say, I'd grab a barbell over a dumbbell anyway, any day, <laughs> when it comes to putting a load on my body. Because, like I said, when you get heavy dumbbells, 
I'm like, man, it's more work it's, than, than a freaking set. Yeah, it's an energy to start the, the workout. Right, right. right. And, of course, and it's you, funny because people are are, are are trying to avoid uh, doing like the, 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 the barbells and especially chest like because of the, 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 the muscle tears and... Uh, you know, uh, you know, but you know what you're doing, right? Yeah, the muscle tear uh, yeah. aspect it, it can happen. Uh, typically, you know, we, we didn't do a lot of flat benching. Yeah, that's what most flat of them happen, especially flat benching. Uh, you know, incline. I I find I find with incline, most most muscle tears I've seen with incline is when guys have their elbows like, perpendicular to the body. Yeah, and not tight enough. That most mm-hmm. of the time. Yeah. Uh, so I I didn't bench like that with incline. I, 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 as an athlete, I like I always like to come out here, uh, so I never thought about that. And I, I gave up bench benching heavy for a while. I would I would actually reverse bench, uh, flat bench over bench press, even guillotine. I would prefer to even do a guillotine yeah. style bench press over just a regular bench press because the load wouldn't be as as high and I wouldn't yeah. be as much risk, and I'd be more cautious. So anything that was like performance aspect for me, I had to give up. Even it came to deadlift. I used to love the deadlift. I loved it, but I would deadlift myself to where I couldn't train good for the rest of the week. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was trying to deadlift on back day and hamstring day. How about how's that for nuts? Yeah. So I had to give it up to a certain extent because it was just it was counterproductive for my body. Yeah, for sure. Because I was too focused on numbers, loads, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it was counterproductive. So when it comes to you know just pushing yourself. You gotta you gotta strategize. It's just not always hardcore. I'm gonna beat myself up every day in the gym, because eventually you're gonna beat yourself up and you're like, okay, I'm beat up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's not good more for, than you should be. Yeah, yeah, and that's not good for the progression. So, I mean, that's what I've learned over the years. Yeah, sure. Quer perguntar alguma coisa do quadro? Ah, não pode né? Falou. Para a dieta não não vamos falar muito não. O que é dieta lá? The the die aspect in in Kuwait, how how is it something different you you've done in US same thing. Eu, eu lembro de assistir um vídeo dele da dieta de cinco mil calorias que ele fez. Uh. Can you remember seeing a video of yours like five hundred uh, five thousand calories? Yeah, I eat. Uh, I eat. A, I, I, eat tudo, when I went to Kuwait. I started tudo. eating a lot more than I ever eat eat before. There, you started eating yeah. there. And uh, the carbs, like dieting on carbs. I died on a lot more carbs. Like I tried to diet on low carbs just because everybody's yeah. complaining about my conditioning. Yes. But my body responded better when you fed me carbs. So I get in much better condition when you put me carbs. Because my coach explained it like this. When it comes to guiding my physique in, if I ever get too flat, mm-hmm. you don't know what you don't know what the look is. You don't know if I'm holding water. You don't know whether it's because I'm flat. You don't know it's because uh, of, of uh, a hormone. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what what it is. So he always makes sure that I have enough carbs in in me to maintain some fullness. So whenever I get to a point to where I'm getting flat, he'll feed me. Oh, and what that does it it it, it kind of gets the metabolism really going to where you can eat and eat and eat going into a contest. And and he got away from because he's thinking I'm getting older. He's like, oh, I don't want too many cheat meals, but it'd be like a certain point to where we'd be ready early, and you know we'd be eating burgers because mm-hmm. he he's like, you know, we got to hold this weight. You're gonna be ready too soon. But that's always happens when I'm eating more carbs. Okay. Never when I'm pulling carbs out. So my advice to guys: the more you can eat in the off season, mm-hmm. the more that window that you have to where you can eat more carbs when you're dieting. You know, that's just because you, you start taking away. Yeah. And, you know, before you know it, you're not taking away as much because you had that window so high. So that's that's one of the things I've, I've understood uh, about carbs. And I, I couldn't, like I say, when it comes to the fullness, the muscle fullness, the performance aspect, the recovery aspect, I'm one of, I'm one of those guys that I'll diet on a lot more carbs than probably people w- would think I should diet on. Uh, just 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 seems the way that we, we work for us. It's what you need it, right? Yeah, it's what you need it. And then when you're in a place where you're pushing, pushing it, pushing it, pushing mm-hmm. it, you know, you don't want to be com- depleted of anything yeah. too long. I mean, some coaches have different strategies. It's not all the same in Kuwait. This is me yes. and Abdullah. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard Roly and some other guys do very low carbs and so no carbs at times. Oh. Uh, but for me, it works work for you. Yeah, you got to put carbs in me. Então, como que ele faz o cardio? Ele tem um metabolismo bom, né? How's your cardio sessions? Because, like, 
you, Car- you cardio, seem to have like a, a fast metabolism, right? Cardio for me, we always whenever I go to Kuwait, I start doing cardio right away, no matter what the goal is, off season. Okay. For for stimulating appetite, so we start off with like okay. 20, 25 minutes. Are you an easy eater or you're, you're like a hard no, eater? no, no? I, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a uh, I don't like to to eat a lot. Really? Uh, so it doesn't look so. <laughs> I don't like to eat a lot, so it doesn't look. It's like so, my fuel burnish drives my hunger. Okay. So we'll start doing cardio just to make sure I can adjust to the meals, meal mm-hmm. plan, and then most of the time we're doing forty five minutes max on a prep before we take it back down again. Cause we like to reach, he likes to get me on a, a hard cardio window early. Okay. If he can, and then pull, pull it back as we get close. So I think the most I've ever done in a prep, maybe one prep, we went up to like a couple hours or so of cardio, but that's because I had competed multiple times that year and my body wasn't responding the yeah. same mm-hmm. way. So that was the only reason I was holding on to size and it was just not want to go. Like I'm trying to get ready for a contest and my body wants to grow. You mm-hmm. run into that occasions when you compete a lot in a year, the body goes to different phases. So that's what we ran into. That's like one prep, but that's rare for me. So typically, like like I said, 45 minutes and then pulling it back. Because like I said, we run into that same issue of just going flat, you know, and being too flat to really figure out – how to gauge things. So it's, I mean, I can't preach this it's way so for delicate, everybody. It's so delicate, right? You have to like adjust everything to. That, that, that's the thing about being in Kuwait when your coach is seeing you. It's and different. You're in the gym yeah, and they yeah. see you and, you know, it's not like you're sending pictures and you're sending updates yeah. and stuff like that. It's like they see you. They can see day when you're day. training. They know the energy that you're giving out the day, this day, that day. I mean, my coach used to even come in used to do cardio in the morning with me. Right. Like, see me doing cardio and stuff, you know? So it's like, it was it was that intense, you know? <laughs> so, it's hard to get better yeah, this way. Right? Exactly. So when you have that kind of, that kind of monitoring, you can, you can make those adjustments clear and you can kind of interpret the information yeah. a lot clearer. So that's, that's the benefit of being in that kind of environment. Yeah. Definitely. Você falou nível? É que o New Hill, ele faz também essa, essa oscilação, né? No... You saying that New also does this type of, uh, Carb cycling stuff. And well, carb, carb cycling is, it comes with, uh, it's not really cycling. It's not like over the week. It's not like, uh, not something that he planned for, but he, he starts to adjust. Yeah, he adjusts. Uh, right. But so it's not like. Feeling. It's like yeah. with his feeling. Right, right. right. It's about feels like, so one week, he, 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 oh, he may do it to a just experiment. So it's like, we're doing good. We're doing that. He's like, man, you, you're doing this, but I want to see if I pull this out for a week. Yeah. What 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 happens? He he may add it back. He may add that back and more. Maybe my body went too fast, and he's like, "Oh no, that's that's too much." Mm-hmm. So we got to pull you pull you back out a little bit. So that's that's how it goes. It's like so it's not really car- the, the cycling would be when he added the fat. Oh, and the, and and the sodium from like the cheat meals, whatever okay. it may be. Mm-hmm. You know, I got it. Throwing that in, and then you find out you you had one load, uh, two meals a day. You're trying to load, it doesn't go in. So now we need two two days back to back where we adding dirty stuff just yeah. to get the weight to hold. Because it's all about the weight, weight holding and being able to stabilize you at any point. Because if, if we ever reach a point to where I'm eating more and my weight keeps going down, that's a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's not what you want. Yeah, right? that's a nightmare. And I've, it happened to me in a contest before. So we, we try to learn from that as much as possible where you're trying to load in a contest yeah, yeah. and the scale keeps going down. Bernie, we all obviously talked about a lot of Kuwait, but what was your journey to the Olympia, to winning the Olympia after Kuwait? So you went to the Sarno in Australia, right? Mm-hmm. You won it. Mm-hmm. What was it, what was next? Uh, so the next that year at the Olympia, I placed what? Uh, no, I placed eighth. Okay. On that comeback year, so I made the same place in my first Olympia, right? That year, uh, who won? Uh, who won that year? What year it was? It was before Sean won. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's got that right. Sean got fifth that year. I got eight. Mm-hmm. And so that was pro- that was that feel. It yeah, had to be feel. So the next year, I ended up getting fifth. Okay. And Sean won. Mm. So my whole thing was, okay. 18, right? Yeah, that was 18. So my whole thing was, mm-hmm. okay. I felt like it was my time because I'm like, okay, Sean's on top. 
up until 2012, I, I was on top of Sean. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time. So Sean got fifth last year, and he won the Olympia. So I'm like, okay, if, if I can come in the Olympia with some momentum, we could take the show. So first things first, we thought we got to go in and win Arnold. Yeah. So that's the year, 2019, I won the Arnold Olympia the same year because we came out at the Arnold. And that prep, I was on fire. Uh, it was It was like, when I'm in situations in life, I feel like everything is talking to me. Like I shouldn't, I shouldn't be surprised because everything should be talking to me. So I go into that meeting, I get that number, I get that one, and the first thing come my mind is I, I'm, I'm going to be the first guy that they see, and the last guy they remember. So I hit that stage, and that's my, that was my mentality. I knew I was going to have to go head to head with William. Yeah, that's my boy. I respect him. And I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but that was my mentality. So I went into that show because I knew if I got that down, people would start talking about me versus Sean going into the Olympia. So that was the goal. That's what I set out to be. And that's how that show went. It was just like, man, it was a battle. But I, that physique I brought was like one of my best physiques I brought to date, yeah. period. And when it came to all everything. So once I won that one, it was like Sean came back. He congratulated me. He's like, okay, bro. It's that time. So I got that motivation, like, okay, going head to head with Sean. So all that prep, I'm going head to head with Sean. But at that time, at time you, knew, you knew that Phil was not coming back? Or it was Sh well, like Sean, well, no, nobody knew. Yeah. I knew Phil, I knew it would take a, knowing Phil, I knew it would take a minute to gather himself from what just happened. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting him to come back. And, and I knew Sean was just, I felt like Sean was like the challenge that I needed at that point. But then it turned out, that Sean wasn't going to do the show. Yeah, everything that happened. And yeah. yeah, and that and I didn't know how to feel about that. Like that that took that almost took some fire out of me. Really? But I was like, okay, I still got to do the job, and this is the best opportunity that I have. So I get it to the Olympia, and the way the way the feel of the Olympia was is like, it was like everything was going too right. Like it was going too right. Like no, nobody, I feel like nobody opposed me. The only mm -hmm. opposition I felt like I had was, uh, was Hottie on stage. And, um, uh, and that's, and that's because his game, his stage game, he's so aggressive on stage, yeah. mm -hmm. which I was for, familiar with him from the San Marino when he beat me at the San Marino. I slacked, I qualified the year before, I mean, the show before California beat Cedric. So I was like, I got my Olympic qualification. They're going to let Cedric win. I'm sure I'm not going to win this one. Coach didn't come out with me. Yeah. So I was like, ah, and I didn't know Hottie was going to be there. I didn't never met Hottie. He got on that stage and they told me I had to help him because he, he was deaf and he didn't, he didn't know good English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm up here thinking I got to help this guy. This guy's showing out on me. He's like, oh, he's <laughs> stepping in front of me. I'm like, hold on, this guy, help this guy. I got to help. I got to help. This guy knows exactly what's going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, so I got surprised by yeah. that. And then so coming to the Olympia, I was prepared for it. I'm like, how are you gonna you gonna bring the stage game, man? So, I think I got I got to confuse him a little bit because, you know, I was touching on him, I was trying to mess with him, so yeah, uh, so he wouldn't keep jumping up. But William was getting pissed at me because <laughs> it's me. I mean, it's William, mm -hmm. me, Hottie. Yeah. So William don't know what's going on with Hottie. He just knows I keep moving up, <laughs> trying to get in front of Hottie because Hottie keeps jumping in the line. So mm -hmm. William don't know. So William's cussing me. He's mad. He's pissed. We get off stage and he's like, What's the, you know, <laughs> confronts me. And I'm like, bro, chill, man. I said, I'm only moved up because Hottie was moving up. I got to move up. I ain't going to let him just keep stepping in front yeah, of me. Yeah, you can't let nobody step in yeah, front of you. Bro. Yeah. So he was like, what? what? He calmed down. I was like, oh, man, that's the only reason. He said, you know me, <laughs> man. We compete each other all the time. You don't ever see me doing that, right? So why would you think I'd be doing that? Yeah. So it's because like, how he's, he's aggressive like that yeah. on stage. So I was we prepared. Saw, we saw this in the Sarno, right? Yeah. They were, they were, say, they were almost yeah. falling off the stage. You know? Yeah. So step, I was, step, I was step, prepared step, for step. it. I was prepared for it. But then Hottie totally ignored me in finals. You know, he totally ignored me because he knew mm -hmm. my strategy at prejudging work. I kind of yeah. kept it in check. At finals, he was like, he was only listening to Hottie scream. Whatever Hottie was screaming in 
Farsi. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know. But he was always, matter of fact, it was so bad, even when I was taking pictures of the winner, he's standing in front of me. I got a trophy. I'm like, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> so, so, you know, but that show was like, it was like, it, it was interesting. It's like, it was like my time. It just felt like it. How much you believe you were going to win? I mean, I, I had no doubt. Wow. Uh, nice. I had no doubt. You just Before everything went down. I mean, when I got to town, Prescott, I mean, everything was seemed like it was going my way. So I was like, man, this is my time. I mean, I, I even think I said at the press conference, I said, you know, I said, I, you know, I think I said something like, I can see the mountaintop right now, and I've never been this close. And that's how I felt. That's legitimately how I felt at that time. I, it's just, that's the general expression. And, yeah, it was just in my sights, and I could see it. So that was the year. And, you know, and, of course, that didn't last long. COVID hit. Yeah, true, yeah. Uh, COVID hit, and... Uh, but, 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 I'm sorry, but back on winning, what's the feeling? Can you describe what's the feeling of, of, of being a bodybuilder and, and receiving one of those... This trophy there. It's it's a, it's a very short lived feeling. The, the mic, Brandon. The mic. Oh, sorry. It's a very short lived feeling. Very short lived. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like, okay, I'm here now. What's next? Uh, you know, it's almost like I'm here now. Okay, I've done this. What's next? Because it's like, when you work, when you see something and you chase it all your life, you yeah, imagine what it's going to be like, what it's going to feel like. But reality, it don't feel, it don't feel, you've already ruined it with your imagination and your anticipation <laughs> yeah. of what it could be like. Because you've already, you know, you've ruined it. So if it doesn't, even if you did feel it the same way, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a, like an original yeah, feeling. You, you were mm -hmm. expecting right. so much, right? Exactly. Yeah. So for me, it, it's exciting and, and amazing. It wasn't, the biggest surprise was my family popping up behind me on stage. Uh -huh. That was the coolest thing for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, man. But at that point, I just felt like, okay, I've accomplished this. Thank God. What do I, what's next? What am I supposed to feel? Like, I don't, you don't, for me, I don't process everything right away. Okay. So I get off stage, I go through the motions, I take the pictures, I do all that. You know when it hits me? I get home days after the Olympia. I'm in the bed, exhausted. I'm going to take a night nap with my wife. All of a sudden, I'm flooded with like emotions wow. out of nowhere, like tears, flooded with emotions, like all these feelings just came out of nowhere. It's like a delayed effect. I don't know if you've ever been driving on the road, you see a cop car go by, and it went by, but all of a sudden, then your heart starts racing, yeah, yeah. like way after it's gone. <laughs> it's like that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So oh, it just hit crazy. me like wow. delayed. Like at the time, it was just like. I was in like a dream space, like just taking it all in, trying to wait on something to happen, it's, you know, wow. like, but I just went through the motions, observed everything. And then, like I said, at, days later, well, when I least expected, I guess when I just relaxed, exhaled, it just hit me. It's like all the, everything just flooded wow. back. Like all of a sudden it just flooded back and mm -hmm. I'm just overwhelmed with emotions. You know, so nice. yeah. And what did with your mindset? Were you like, okay, now I have to maintain at the top, or? Of course, of course, that's that's the mindset. That's the mindset. But from my experience, just 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 different things in life. You know, we don't always get what we want. We work for what we want. We don't always get what we want. But at the end of the day, we always it's always something to learn. There's always something to take away from every experience. So I know what I desire. But at the end of the day, now I look for what I'm going to take away from whatever happens, because at a certain point, I, 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 you develop a level of maturity once you go through yeah. something over and over again, and you look at it different. So as much as I wanted to, I'm only in control of so much, you know, yeah. Yeah. especially in bodybuilding. Bodybuilding has taught me, you know, you could be looking great three hours before the show. You step on stage and you're like, what happened? What happened? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And you, don't, you have no idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, that's the thing with bodybuilding. It's like, you have expectations, but it's better that you just wait yeah. and be patient 
and and don't get caught off guard. You know, even when you know you're gonna win, it's like I don't sit there and tell myself I'm gonna win. I I try to just not think about anything because I don't want to have an expectation and have it shattered. Yeah, and then have to express that in front of people. You know, because yeah, yeah. I had the wrong expectation. So I, I don't, you know, even though I know I may have a feeling I may, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm holding that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, 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 let's not it's go a, there. It's a nice way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. And so COVID, it came after and what happened? Uh... Well, COVID, you know, I, COVID, you know, it was interesting because it, it killed my travel, you know, because I had some tours set up. I was doing yeah. running a lot of travel. It's what, I got to go to the UK and I think after, everything after that just crashed and burned. I mean, I went to the Middle East. I had a trophy in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. I was, you know, I was, I was moving. Yeah. But then I went to the UK after that tour. It's like everything. I didn't even really get to, you know, the Arnold barely even happened at, at that point. So it's like, yeah, it, everything just crashed. Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, when can I train? What can I train? Sneaking in my gym and training. Uh, not knowing what's going on with companies and businesses and not even knowing if Olympia is going to happen. So not even knowing if I can get to Kuwait. Yeah. Like, it took me – it was a hard time getting to Kuwait. I like I've, I, I spent four days in Houston, had to go back home. Wow. And then try to leave from another airline from from back home, uh, totally just different to route, to in, just to get yeah. to Kuwait, because it was just so many loopholes, so many criteria. You got to get a test this time and that time, so it was just so much burden on them moving around anywhere. Yeah, and then you get to Kuwait, and you're subject to, you know. Quarantine when you get there, you get got to be in a quarantine hotel, all these kind of like things they tell you. days inside the hotel. Yeah, yeah, they tell you all these things are going to happen. Fortunately for me, none of those things really happened. I could get back to work, get to work as soon as I got there, yeah. which they probably didn't want, but I was able to. But it was just so many. It was, I mean, I even think I had to go to Abu Dhabi and stay in Abu Dhabi for a week before I even could get to Kuwait. It was just, you know. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, it you had just, to be 15 days yeah, before and yeah, someone else, yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, it was just weird. So that, 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 that kind of, I would, nobody was prepared for that. Yeah. And I, I don't, I wouldn't even make an excuse that it affected my prep because I, I think I, we had a different strategy coming in for Big Rami and, uh, and Phil. Yeah. And my goal, I, my, my, my issue was my goal was so much that I finally got this opportunity to go head to head with Phil. I didn't even think about Rami, but I knew what it was going to require to beat Phil. It was going to require me to be on top of my condition, my conditioning game. And, uh, and that motivated me enough. Just being able to go head to head with Phil was what really drove me that year. And uh, seeing him come back and, you know, having that build up. I mean, the build up was probably the fun, the funnest part. Yeah, for sure. And then getting on stage and being able to accomplish I didn't win, but it was a win for me because I had beat Phil. And I was like, I was wondering if that day was ever going to come after he retired. <laughs> I've been waiting on that day. Yeah. Like, since I met Phil, back, you know, since I was backstage at Phil at the Nationals, and he said something to me that made me go, huh? Mm. Like, I was like, you feel he? Like, why are you saying that? And then so I'm waiting on the day that me and Phil can go head to hell. I can be good enough. To, be, to stand uh, with Phil, yeah, because I at that point I never even barely even compared. I mean, one time in a, you know, one year, pose down. I'm trying to go up and get some shots by him and pose by mm -hmm. him, so for pictures, so I can get some references. And he he wouldn't he wouldn't allow it. He's moving it. I'm like, <laughs> man, come on, sit still, pose with me, man. I'm just trying to get some get some motivation. Yeah, you know. So so this was the opportunity for me and. And like like I said, even though I didn't win, I was I was happy with the results. I was satisfied with the results, and uh, and I just had to move on at that point. You know, I had to take you got to take your knocks and move on, and go away with the with whatever wins that you have. And my win was like, uh, yeah, I feel look, at, I finally did it. And Phil was like, hey, bro, no hard feelings, or anything for anything was said over here. I'm like, nah, I ain't worried about all that, bro. I know this is part of the nature of the business, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna uh, you know, talk it up and be competitive. So, but yeah, it was it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. So 
Eu queria perguntar para ele sobre o Arnold de 2019, que para mim foi o físico que ele chocou o mundo, que ele de fato da... virou o contender do Olímpia. Aqui que você ia perguntar. Perguntar para ele como que ele fez diferente essa preparação. The, uh, he said this is your, be he, your best physique in his opinion. Uh -huh. If you did anything different in this prep and Arnold uh, 2019. <laughs> If I did anything different? Yeah, what you did different? Because uh, porque the, ele mostrou uma evolução muito grande nesse ano depois de virou Olímpia. It was like a, you had like a, a such a fast progression and then turning Olympia. What, what you did different? Uh, or was or, or was the quiet system? Telegram. I think it was timing. Honestly, it was just timing. If I chalk it up to anything, it was just timing. It was the right seasoning for me at that time. The right balance. Uh, the right. It's insane, yeah. The, the right best shape, your the, best the shape. right transition from from the previous season. Oh, Mike, Mike, please. Oh, the right transition from the previous season. Uh -huh. Like, uh, so I did the Olympia, and I and I was able to rebound really well after that Olympia, and we and we was able to bring in a condition. I mean, Franco, too, gave me some really good motivation. Came out and adjusted my posing uh, right before I went on stage. He was making some things, so I I was just like, man, this is. This is this is great. This is I'm on. So I mean, the only thing that's different from here is mm. from the Olympia from that point. I continue to put on more size. Mm. So here, everybody like this look. I like this look too, no problem. But for that Olympia, I was just so much f fuller, so oh. much fuller. Like that, I didn't have the separation in the lines that I had there. But it was it was still like. You know how you you like that full feel. You like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that feel. Yeah. yeah, but there, but here it was more my more my. Uh, I, I think uh, the perfect package. Everything fit together. Relax. Coloca o vídeo que eu te mandei. I agree. There's a video of your evolution. It's insane just to see how how you started. Uh, acho que tá no. Deixa eu ver se. It's on YouTube. A video of yours, your evolution. I think from your first show, I believe. Just let me know. Just let me know. Uh, see. From 204 to 220. So. Pode ir passando, Gordex, que o vídeo é meio longo. This was your natural bodybuilding, yeah? We that's used to uh, do backflip on the stage. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the Holy muscle shit. mania. That's the one so many I was talking about when I went to Miami. <laughs> We're really athletic, man. Come on. Yeah, it's funny to me now. Yeah, I believe so. You're, yeah, you're my like, wife is always showing us to the kids. Você vai passando pra frente aí que tem 13 minutos o vídeo. Deixa ele comer, deixa ele comer. Ah. Yeah, so they had a bunch of guys people filming so I was just like ah oh, camera let's do it <laughs> yeah, that was my first show first show still natural that's yeah, impressive that's my physique for natural matter of fact there was a forum called T Nation and I was on there being a cocky young guy <laughs> telling people I was gonna do my first show and everything and there's a guy who's my friend today he came out to be a witness for the forum <laughs> it was crazy yeah that was the junior nationals That's when I, I had no, I didn't shave. I didn't even really eat. Cause I, was, I didn't think I was gonna do well at this show. How old were you at this point? Uh, see, I had to be. In the last show, the last picture you were like about 19, right? No, I was maybe a little older. A little yeah. older? And that's uh, the year I won, the USA age. Oh man, look at my son when I did that. I remember this video. That's in Metroflex. Well, was it? Yeah. That was in Metroflex. And then that's in, no, that's in Atlanta. That's in Atlanta. That's when Trey Brewer was, was really big. I remember those pictures in front of those, of that gym. Biceps dele é muito impressionante. Muito desenvolvido. Your biceps are insane. Genetics or you work harder on your biceps Genetics. early on? Genetics. It's insane. Tá com ele desde sempre, né? Não é nada. É, é dá pra ver que... Tá, daqui dá tá pra ali, ver. Né? Tá ali sempre. Fala que dá pra... Ao vivo dá pra ver que é de verdade. Yeah. We can see personally that it's, it's a real biceps. Like, it's not... 
Not not auto. It's not like a couple that we see nowadays. I post on the release. All the trains were heavy. Eat you. Feel, feel free, bro. But you post on the release. Why, Mr. Olympia, bro? This thing for to do. Os vídeos de palco aí. Muito estético, né? Desde sempre. É. That's my first oh, Olympia. Nice. I mean, first Olympia being in eighth place, it's really, it's insane by itself, right? We don't have many athletes that can do, can do this today. Muito amarrado, né? É. Olha. O braço dele também é assim. I think it's my first Arnold. First Arnold? Yeah. I took my, I took some cab fibers in it before that show too. Oh, so the, I, was, I was soft from the back because of, cause I was doing a photo shoot. Oh. And I was showing a photographer how to do an exercise. Glute ham race. And I didn't even do the exercise, but I was dry at the time. So when I leaned forward, it rocked and my... Some fibers pop. I thought it was my hamstring. I literally thought it was my hamstring. Oh. That was the Arnold Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, him Brazil, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. So this was, yeah, this is me yeah. and George. Your first uh, Arnold champ. A champion. Uh, primero, primero Arnold que le veo. First Arnold mm -hmm. you won was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. and this was, uh, this was me solo here. 2014, I was on my own. I did that only. I only did this show that yeah. year. Brent, looking back, uh, having a coach from the start was something that you 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 probably would have done if you could go back. Yeah, of course. But I actually, actually, I didn't. I was naive. The mic, the mic. Oh, actually, I was naive. I didn't know anything about okay. that yeah, process. Yeah. I had no idea. So me me having a coach, I've, I definitely recommended it. But at the time, I I didn't know. It was what it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just because uh, you could have been better sooner right say so this is when i was going backwards this is when i was uh trying to try my best and pushing myself the hardest yeah. so just because you push yourself the hardest it's doesn't mean it's going to turn out yeah. so this is when i was the lowest carbs probably doing the most cardio and i was killing myself you got like it looked like you got thinner yeah right? exactly it, um, it's funny because you were eating more you were trying more and you, it, it just, yeah i was i was doing trying to do everything they said i wasn't doing <laughs> to a greater extent yeah and what this is 2017 so this is my first comeback olympia yeah, i think i got eight that, that year but it was awesome physique also yeah this year they had me in fifth at prejudging and then for some reason i got a's <laughs> well, what, you got you got worse to the finals or? i don't i don't know i don't know for some reason i think three guys jumped me it was uh roden uh roley and nathan wow because <laughs> i was being compared to dexter that uh that prejudging. Possible can't relax. Sorry. What year is this? Uh, this is 18. 18. Yeah, that's 18. So you just start you start to have a different look. Yeah, it started <clears> to get <throat> a little bit bigger. And this is that year I tried to get the uh, the poses by uh, Phil Heath at the pose down because I wanted to see. I just remember the red trunks. That's how I remember. <laughs> I was like, I need a comparison. And this is the, the year. Yeah. yeah, the year. And Bonac was crazy. No, this is this is this is not nineteen. This was eighteen. It's nineteen. Eighteen. Plus for French Relax. Tá falando que yeah, that's eighteen. Que esse ano é 2018, não é 19 não. Passa aí. Yeah, see, I was that show. That was when I was well, trying to get the field. Yeah, that's nineteen. Yeah. Passa aí, passa aí. Well, some of that's not. Some of that's not, I don't think. Because it's a... Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yes, right. 19, yeah, it's 19? Yeah. Possible Paul. Because I got the Brazil hat on. Yeah, they just got some training footage mixed in there, though. Yeah. I can't tell if it's all from the same This, way. This... Uh, that posing in front of that, that... That window is classic. Yeah, this one. Yeah, that's not. I remember those because I had the gray beard when I didn't die. Nah. Me and William, me and William were good friends too. So it's 
he 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 actually. Oh, that's that's so nice to see this evolution. Man. He actually so reprimanded me. He was one of the only bodybuilders to reprimand me because I showed up at a show in Florida to compete against William, and William was like worried about me. He was worried about being competitive with me, so I had a car, so I driven around, and he said, "Man, you need to quit. You need to quit BSing, man." I said, "What do you mean?" He says, "Man, you, I come in here expecting to compete against you. And you don't even show up." <laughs> Like he gave he gave it to me, bro. I was like, I was like, you you right? You're right. <laughs> Couldn't say nothing. Butch, I would say ask you more This is insane, Brandon. And Brandon, what? Uh, so we can wrap it up. It's getting a, bit, a little bit late right now. But uh, what's next for you? What's the plans right now? What are we gonna see Brandon competing again? Yeah, every, every everybody when, asked me every, when we're gonna see if every, it, if it happens. Everybody asked me about what's next, and I'm, I'm one of the people. My wife probably hates this about me. I don't. I don't. I'm not a planner. No. I, I'm, I'm never uh, just. I've never been one of those people to just lay out goals down the line. I like play every year by year, and I lived every day as each individual day. But I do plan on competing at the Olympia this year. Uh, that's the plan. Nice. So. Uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of set out the Arnold this year just to spend some time with the family so I can focus on that preparation. Uh, and I won't have to be gone for so long. Kind of enjoy some some time. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's the plan for me to uh, get back into the show. Uh, like I said, I got some – we didn't get to bring the, the package that I wanted to bring because of the incident that happened at the last Olympia two days out. Uh, so – what we wanted to bring, even though what we brought, I, I got to be grateful because spending that long in the hospital, not eating and going through that stressful situation, I, I didn't even expect that outcome. And I really didn't know if they were going to let me compete. But fortunately, let me compete. Fortunately, I was able to still perform. But I think we were on a good good track before that happened. For, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to bring that to the stage. So I'm looking to, you know, See if I can come come to the stage fully, uh, 100%, not having to go through none of the drama that I had to go through last year. Even though all that drama I went through last year, I still enjoyed it because yeah. uh, some about the people, people looking, caring, checking on you, and just, just being able to all the support that you have when you're going through something. You don't ever know that until you go through something. Yeah. So that was really a cool experience for me, actually, to see all the people that was, you know, really, really concerned and, you know, really hoping that I was going to be able to, you know, come back and do the show. So I uh, really enjoyed that that process. And, and like I said, I wouldn't change it because of that. But, you know, this year, hopefully, I won't have to go through that kind of experience again. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Brandon, last question. I'm, as a Brazilian, I cannot, uh, I cannot less uh, pass asking you what you're thinking about the Brazilian athletes. I mean, Rafa, I think you obviously saw a little bit about Ramon also. Yes. I, I think... I think uh, the Brazilian athletes are just stepping it up each and every year. Uh, I don't see I don't see any quit in them, and I think uh, I can just see them inspiring in each other as they continue to get better. I think you guys have such a community that's growing here so fast. Yeah. I just think it's all, all it's going to take. It's just they, they let you they let they let one of these guys in the door even a little bit. Then y'all y'all gonna come knocking the doors down. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's that's how yeah, I see it. Yeah, because I, I've seen Rafa like, I think he's been the first one in the open class to really kind of get things really really moving, and him continue to progress. And then you got guys coming up right up behind him, ready to step on step on stage and compete with him. Yeah, I mean that's that's mad. And I well he's competing this weekend, right? Yeah, he is. I'm looking forward to seeing the maturity. In his in his physique because he's got the quality. Yeah, he's and got the, the quality, right? And, the lines, yeah, and the yeah. structure. But the maturity is kind of like what I saw myself. The maturity, you, you know, it was like icing on a cake. And I think, uh, you know, I think he's coming to that to that place. And, and, and you guys seem to have some great support around all the athletes yeah, here. This we can guarantee that. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Sure, so yeah. that's something that you don't see everywhere. And, and as long as these athletes are getting that kind of support. You know they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be able to do a lot of things. So continue, and I'll be here to observe and analyze and cheer for, cheer for you guys uh, as as y'all continue to progress in the bodybuilding world. Thank, thanks so much, Brendan. Can you give me 
uh, I need you just to get me four numbers between one and fifteen because we're gonna give a prize to the people. One f to sixteen, actually, a number, four numbers of one to sixteen, so we can give a prize for people that uh, participated here in the live. We go fifteen. Hold on. Oh, sorteio, tá, pessoal? Cupom da Growth, número 15, Rafael Moreira. Rafael me chama no inbox. Todo mundo, aliás, ó, recado pra todo mundo. Ed, ed me chama no inbox, que eu vou explicar o que vocês precisam mandar, tá? É, Kit Growth, Photographer Alex, Rafael Moreira. Another one, please, Bernie. 15, 1, 7. 1, 17 or 1 and 7? 1 and 7. 1 and 7, então, ó. É, kit da Garimpo, Vitor Lopes me chama lá no inbox. Número 7, Bombados, Kit do Zambrota me chama lá, Bombados já sabe. É last one, please. The last one. Last four? Number. Four numbers, yeah. Oh, six just came to my mind. I don't know why. Rafael Rosa, six. curso do Twin. <risos> Rafael Rosa também já de casa. O do Zambrota é o. O Bombados. Sete. Show? Brandon, thank you so much, man. I'm sorry for the, the inconvenience we had early. You know, uh, it's hard to describe, like, when we started this project and just in such a short time, having Olympia sitting here is, it's unreal, it's an honor. I'm very happy to have you here in Brazil, and especially in the podcast. Thank you very much for this this opportunity, and uh, I'm sure you're going to like being in Brazil, especially this time here in this, this, this Arnold Expo. Thank you so much, man. Never had a bad time here. Thanks for the hospitality, guys. Appreciate the invite. And thank you for the food. Yeah. yeah. You should eat more. Welcome. You're, you're, welcome. You should have eaten more. You gotta more. finish the job first. You gotta earn your yeah. earn your food, <laughs> earn your right? Food. You gotta earn your yeah. food. <risos> Pessoal, obrigado por quem ficou até agora. A partir de amanhã estaremos no Arnold cobrindo o evento, beleza? Então aguardemos vocês lá. A live de tradução vai deu subir ruim. depois, deu depois, ruim, né? deu ruim, então a gente vai subir depois, né? Então fique atento, vai sair traduzido. Isso, então... vai ter corte com tradução também, então é, fiquem então... tranquilos aí que. Desculpa, porque realmente foi o um problema técnico, a gente não é, conseguiu fazer... Não foi do jeito que a gente estava fazendo antes e acabou não, não dando tanto certo, mas fiquem tranquilos, o conteúdo não vai faltar. Certo, Godex? Tamo junto. Tamo aí, thanks, Brandon. Valeu, galera.